Hey there guys, Dragon Master here, and I want to welcome you to Star Wars in Earth, Unity, Episode 10, The War on Two Fronts. So, I don't really have anything to say except one thing, which is I do apologize for, I guess, taking a bit longer with this one. It's going to be a while. I've sort of had a writer's block on how I wanted to take the series going, but I was able to figure it out. So, I do apologize if it was a bit while, longer than usual, and I apologize to those who I made wait in, but... We're going to be going back to weekly videos again, so yeah. I guess without further ado, let's get straight into the video. We start off in the Mandalorian system. It has currently come under attack by the Huts. The Huts have launched a sneak attack into the system, attacking a few outposts in secret that the Mandalorians had established. With this said, they now could move in their main fleet to attack. Of course, the Mandalorians still hadn't heard, as they were still talking of the, with the war going on currently. But sadly for them, it would prove to be a fatal mistake. As down at Mandalore, where the new capital for the Mandalorians had been built with the help of the Terrans, they currently see a shadow cover the city. And when they look, they're shocked to see a ginormous hut dreadnought cruiser currently hovering over the city and entering the atmosphere. The Mandalorian clan leaders immediately order for, for the Mandalorian fleet to get here immediately, as they had sent them off to scout a disturbance they had heard. But sadly for them, it had turned out the huts had more or less planted or created strange activity at the edge of their system to get the fleet away. And since the Huts had ordered their mercenaries to keep the outpost operational so they wouldn't suspect anything. So they activate the shield around the city and immediately get all fighters ready. With this said, many Mandalorian vessels, I mean Hut vessels, begin landing, transports, and troops begin to debark and to start attacking anything they see. Well, anyone they see. This would result in them coming into blows with the Mandalorian forces that are currently stationed here. A ginormous battle would break out, as Hutt's mercenaries, and along with their special new droids they had built, attack the Mandalorians while the Mandalorians fought fiercely. All in all, the Mandalorians were suffering a massive invasion as more hut ships arrived. Luckily for them, the Mandalorian fleet had just arrived. It was full of old Mandalorian ships and even a few dreadnought vessels. But these ships of the Mandalorians were ready for war. As both the hut fleet and the Mandalorian fleet got into position, a figure who was currently at the edge of this, well, I guess at the edge of, like, Mandalore's moon, who was watching as the battle was about to break out, was chuckling. This was the same figure which had more or less talked with Jason. He was current, well, it was currently observing these events, as it had to report this back to Jason, and of course, its master as well. As they immediately told its stealth vessel to move and get out of the system. As both the Mandalorian and Hut fleets began to engage. Back at Naboo, the Imperial forces had landed outside the City of Feet and had begun a siege of the city. Jason had personally gone down to the planet, along with many of his own forces, to find his uncle. Of course, he would later run into... To and well, I guess he would see his uncle across at the palace and would order his forces to begin concentrating fire there. Jason was confident in his abilities to fight many sort of lightsaber duelists, but he knew that he would lose to his uncle on any day, as his uncle was no joke, as he was one of the best Jedi around. So he ordered a more simple option instead of fighting him. 
bury him under rubble. He would yell out, Fire on the on the palace immediately, he screamed out, and the forces and his forces would begin as he told, and they would launch many missiles and even use new Imperial walkers as they would blast the position. But sadly the city of Naboo had had a new sort of force field generator built in its in the city to protect it from arboreal bombardment and I guess l sieges as well. Jason was not pleased by this, but he knew there wasn't much he could do. But of course he had other plans. He then ordered his forces to begin sieging the plant, begin sieging for who knows how long, but until the shield generator went down. And he ordered non-stop along with his own vessels. With this said, the star destroyers in space would immediately begin blasting the planet, well, more or less the city, along with his own forces. This would go on for hours and hours, as Jason would order more fire. Eventually, the shield generator would give out, as he had ordered spies in advance before he'd begun the invasion to stay in the city and keep low profile and if there was anything they needed to sabotage. With this said, he ordered them to sabotage the generator, which they did, and when the generator turned off, the entire city freaked out. Jason, pleased by this, would immediately order his forces to charge, as Imperial stormtroopers and many other forces began charging in, along with Corellians, and the huts who joined him, and Mandalorians as well. Many armies would begin charging through and attacking anyone they saw. They would begin capturing parts of the city, but would run into resistance, as Jedi would be seen fighting with them. Many Jedi would attack the Imperials, while those who were part of the strike force. Some notable members were Kyle Katarn and... Corn Horn, Cor Horn, ah, Corin Horn, sorry, it's kind of a bit hard to pronounce his name of it. He, these were two notable members, and they would be an excellent duo, cutting through many forces. He would see this and smile. Hmm, it seems I have some personal business to take care of, he says, and walks off. He knew many Corellians saw it. Koran, and they knew they did not want to fight him as he was a Corellian force sensitive. He knew this and knew that to gain their loyalty, he could not kill him, but he could incapacitate him and then take him prisoner. He would then march up in to him and say, Ah, Corin, I'm glad you're here, as you are one of the reasons why I haven't been gaining much support recently, as you with the Jedi is not good. And since you are a hero to the Corellians, I'm going to need you to come with me. Of course, you would say, no, I can't do that. And then Jason would sigh, and I see you've made your choice. And he says, yes. He shrugs his shoulder before igniting his lightsaber. And Kyle would begin a would come to his side as they all three would engage in a heavy duel. Jason would prove why he was not only the great grand's not only why he was the grandson of Anakin Skywalker, but also a Skywalker and would prove himself very well in combat. He would fight both Corrin and Kyle to an equal foot in, which surprised them how he was able to take the two of them on. But Jason, like many other, well certain very few people had studied both sides of the Force, along with the living and cosmic Force to make himself truly a powerful Jedi. This would prove to be useful to his advantage, as he eventually would begin pushing them back. Kyle and Corrin would fight harder and harder. But Jason, knowing that they had to wrap this up soon, would order his forces to surround them, which they did. Corrin and Kyle would look around and see that they were surrounding, then begin backing up to each other and get them ready. And he would order his forces to stun them, as he also wanted Kyle. As he was about to say fire, a massive force push was sent, sending many of the his forces flying. But Corrin, Kyle, and Jason were fine. They immediately looked for the source and then saw him. 
It was Luke Skywalker walking down to go fight his nephew. He had his lightsaber in hand and ignited and said, Jason, this ends now. And he's got in position. And Jason would chuckle and get in position as well and reunite, reignite his lightsaber and says, Indeed, Uncle. And then they would stare at each other as both Kyle and Corrin backed off and Luke and Jason would run at each other and yell, Rah! and that is where we're going to leave it off. So looks like we're going to have a tense battle with, with, with Luke and Jason for the next, for episode 11. So the reason why Jason can both fight both Cor Coran and Kyle is that he's been studying and it also involves that shadowy figure who's very powerful. As Jason is also a Skywalker and very talented. So he of course would be able to be a match for both J for both Kyle and Coran. The reason why he's a worry of Luke is because Luke is currently one of the most powerful Jedi currently, but not one of the most powerful force users right now. As if you've all read Legends, you know where I'm going, where there's someone stronger than Luke, which will force him into an alliance with some unlikely people. But that's for the future. So I guess without further ado, I'll see you next time for the battle of Luke and Jason Skywalker. And that's where we go. And I guess, oh, sorry. See ya.